The Indigo Disc DLC has given us the brand new Diplin evolution, Hydrapple. Hydrapple is a grass dragon type tank that has a solid base 120 special attack, along with 110 defense, 80 special defense, and 106 HP. There are three solid potential ability options in Super Sweet Syrup that lowers evasion of opposing Pokemon, Regenerator that heals 33% of max health when switched out, or Sticky Hold which stops its item from being taken from things like Knock Off. Hydrapple also has a brand new move called Fickle Beam. This is an 80 power dragon move that has a 30% chance to double power to a crazy 160. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I have got a crazy one for you. The new DLC has brought so many new toys for us to test out. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second. I promise you won't regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Grafii. Now, I decided to toss out the buddy Golurk. We got a Band-Aid on our chest and we are out here ready for battle. Now, Grafii is a little fella who has a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of things this thing can do. However, it doesn't have a great matchup against the old Iron Giant over here. So I'm actually just gonna go for the trick. I'm gonna give something a choice band and they decide to just go for the U-turn here. And it also actually ends up activating the Poison Touch. So while we do get poisoned, that's actually kind of good intel to know. It means this thing's not going to be prankster. And that kind of tells us, you know, a little bit at least about the build of this thing. It's not going to be able to have priority on non-attacking moves. So it's likely not going to be like a swagger, mirror herb kind of situation. So in comes the duck on the trick. And I figure this thing having a choice band, it's decent because it makes it predictable. But it's actually going to be able to hit a bit harder at this point. And also, I really don't want to find myself in like a dance battle with the, <laughs> with the crazy toad duck over here. So I'm going to end up switching out. I want to save the Golurk for later. Potential Stealth Rock, but it's also good against things like the Jolteon. And now this is a great opportunity for me to bring in the greatest apple of all time. I bring in Snapple, we got snakes, we got apples. What more could you ask for, right? We come in with the Dragon and Grass typing, I'm able to take Aqua Stabs all day long, even with that thing having a choice band. Uh, and at this point, it's, it's time to unleash the heads. I'm gonna go for the Fickle Beam, try to grab the roll on basically whatever they decide to switch into, and potentially grab ourselves 160 base power before stab attack and predicting a grass move they decide to bring in the hearth flame ogre pond but he comes in wearing his crazy fire mask thing this is gonna be a fun time actually it's not because i do in fact get the roll bring out all of the heads and fickle beam just straight up melts the little ogre so snapple came here to do two things keep the doctors away and also just melt ogre so we're doing pretty good so far now they get a free switch directly back into the quackwaval and that tells me that this thing is probably going to be carrying an ice move and we are allergic to ice out here. I do have the Terra Steel, but I don't want to go ahead and commit the Terra yet. So I'm actually just going to predict something like an ice move, go into the Xbox. Mom says it's my turn on the Xbox. I go into the all 360 and they do actually end up going for the Triple Axle, which I believe is a new move for the Quackleball. So luckily, Metagross is able to take it nicely other than the critical hit. And at this point, again, it's, it's nice to know that this thing is going to be choice banded. So it's a predictable little ducky. But at this point, I'm just going to go for the Psychic Fangs. I don't know what kind of fangs Metagross is working with, but homie has the ability to do that now, so we're definitely going to take that. It's a nice little stab attack here. Ability to break through screens if, if it is up, but they decide to switch into the new, like, bridge Duraludon. But he comes in looking absolutely insane. It does take it relatively nicely, even with the crit. But at this point, I feel like this thing doesn't actually have the ability to do too much damage to me. I can just go for an Earthquake. I do outspeed, but it is barely able to live. And since we actually resist this thing stab, it has to go for an Aura Sphere, and we take those all day. We are also, in fact, a large metal fella. I feel like if, if the, we weren't battling against each other, these two would be absolutely friends. But uh, business is business, baby. I can actually just finish this thing off with a Trailblaze, since it was in so, so low of chip range. I can grab myself a nice little free speed boost. So Metagross has got his crazy little spider legs working overtime, and at this point they can revenge switch into whatever they like. And they actually decided to go into the Terrapagos. Now this little Neopet looking crazy fella is quite the interesting Pokemon. Essentially, it's going to come in and go into full Frisbee form. So this little devil is the guy responsible for the new Stellar Terra type. Essentially what it means is, when you Terra, you keep your original defensive typing. So this thing's just going to keep its normal typing. However, now once per battle, they gain the normal Terra boost to any attack they use. Also, they'll now hit any other Terradmon super effectively with Terra Blast at a maximum of four uses. Now outside of competitive matches in Terra Raid Dens, you can use it um, unlimited times, but I just decided to go for that Meteor Mash. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but they do go for the Terra Star Storm. Pokemon's just making crazy shit up at this point, and this is a 120 base power normal move, and that is gonna take out the Metagross. So now we have this like 
all-seeing turtle over here that has like all sorts of types flying around him. It's a it's a crazy situation and Pokemon is <laughs> literally wild. However, I can just go into Snapple once again. Hydrapple actually has a good matchup because uh, with that Assault Vest, I can take special attacks all day long and essentially just fire off some pretty decent damage and also potentially even get the roll on another Fickle Beam. So they decided to just go for the Dark Pulse here. And with the Assault Vest, we are absolutely eating that up, no problem. I believe that means that that got the boost as if it was Terra Dark, but Max HP and Assault Vest Hydrapple just literally goes crazy. So I can essentially just fire off one more Fickle Beam here as they do in fact go for the Terra Star Storm. That's just gonna do a lot of damage regardless. This is the 120 base power move, but we still actually just eat it super nice. One more beam is gonna take care of it and down goes the Terrapago. So interesting to see this thing. It actually has a couple different opportunities for abilities to be running. Um, and it's, I'm gonna definitely have to explore how that little thing works. But now they get a free switch and they decide to go into the Jolteon. Now, Hydrapple actually has a pretty solid matchup against like the rest of their team. But the Jolteon ends up going for the Alluring Voice, which it so I think gets access to now. But we're able to live it because of that Assault Vest. And then the coverage with that Earth Power is going to be enough to take care of the Jolteon. So, special defense while tanking out here, doing its job, while just doing his little apple best. So now they get a free switch, they have two Pokemon left, they're just going to go into the Grafia here. This thing can finish me off with that U-turn, and that's going to drag out their final Pokemon, which is of course going to be that Quackaval. Again, I think there's a little bit of a problem being Choice Banded. It does have coverage, but it just depends on what we can kind of force them to have to lock themselves into. So. Buddy with his weird toes comes in here, and at this point, I'm gonna go into our new crazy ass Entei form, the Gouging Fire. So, while I am fire type, I'm also dragon, so I'm neutral to their water attacks, but more importantly, I can actually take advantage of what old Mufasa wants to do here. So, we activate that booster energy, gives us a nice little attack boost, and now I can go for the Burning Ball Wark. Now, this is a new signature move, and I basically say, hey, go ahead and uh, touch this on my head real quick, bro. I promise. It won't even hurt. It's not even hot, I, I swear. They go for the Aqua Step, and now guess what? You're working with Burnt Toes out here. Essentially, this works as a Protect that also burns the opponent if they make physical contact. So, of course, they do. We get that burn, and now having this thing's attack is going to make it a whole lot more manageable to deal with. Uh, and I also even have a plus one attack on my end. So, I can just go for the Dragon Claw here and do ourselves some big old damage. It does end up living, but the Aqua Step, even with the Choice Band being burnt, definitely helps us out. And we are taking that absolutely no problem. So they do actually get the speed boost, of course, with the Aqua Step. So it is going to now outspeed. And I could actually go for another Burning Bulwark here. But I just decided to go for the Dragon Claw. Seeing how much damage it was able to do, I'm confident that we can actually still get through the Grafia anyway. They actually end up getting a crit, which doesn't, it shouldn't matter too much because I finished it with the Dragon Claw. And uh, <laughs> this, this is such a weird, I honestly, I really like this new Entei form. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Of the, of the new Paradox forms. I, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with them. I think they're pretty sick. So their final Pokemon is going to be this Grafii. I go for that Burning Ball where I say, hey, touch this real quick. I promise it will not burn you. But they actually end up going for the Mud Shot. This is like a crazy uh, kind of utility Grafii trying to drop some speed Mud Shot. It still likely isn't even in range to actually take me out. Being max HP, I'm a pretty thick and bulky fellow over here. They go for it. I'm able to live. And then I, after the speed drop, just for the shenanigans, we're able to finish them off with the Earthquake. So that is going to be the end of the match. And that was a super cool game. Also, shout out to the fact that we can actually play uh, these Wi-Fi battles on different stadiums and not just the damn courtyard in the, the, <laughs> the school. So honestly, that was just a fun match. I got to show off some, some cool stuff. I had a good time with it. Let me know what you guys think about the new DLC. Is there anything that, uh, that released and became available that you'd like me to check out? Leave a comment. I do appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.